Hello everyone, me Mr. here, and I think I want everyone to get one thing out of this video. Puzzles set by a human being are going to be much better than a puzzle set by a computer. Sudokus that you saw in newspapers are terrible, and a puzzle set by a human is like telling you a story. So yesterday I was talking to some non-puzzler friends, and my Sudoku setting came up. I have maybe one or two easy puzzles, but they're not really great for beginners. So I was thinking maybe I could make a video showcasing how I make a puzzle for beginners. We are setting today a killer Sudoku. Now a killer Sudoku is pretty simple, and it is one of the most commonly done Sudoku clues. Newspapers even have killer Sudokus. So killer Sudokus look a lot like this, where they have number in the top left corner of a cage, and these cages have to sum to that number in the top left corner, and they cannot repeat a digit. So these two cells sum to five. Another example would be this two, four, adding to six, and this doesn't work because you can't repeat the one to get to, to nine using double one and seven, uh, because no repeats are allowed in cages. One of my favorite deductions in Killer Sudoku is that if the sum is double a number, then you can't put that number in the cage because it will repeat in the cage. For example, if I do a six cage, even if I could somehow draw a diagonal six cage that could repeat a three in not a row, column, or box, you still couldn't do that because it repeats the three and Killer Sudoku says that you can't repeat digits in a cage. So we can't do double three, so in this row, we'll have one, two, four, and five in these cells. And I wanted to put some other cage in here, maybe that needs to have digits that are between one and five-ish, but can be three. It's just sort of fun to realize, hey, there's a logical deduction here, and this has to be a three because it can't, three can't go in these cells, and all of these cells have to go below six. If you want to make a 9x9 Sudoku because it's a little bit more popular, but you want to make it sort of artificially easier, like half of a 9x9, essentially, then what you can do is you can make the logic in the puzzle completely symmetric. For example, if we add two 14 cages here and then add into here 15 maybe, then we can do a basically the exact same deduction in this row that we did in this row. We can say, well, 14 is obviously seven times two. So I can't do double seven into these cells. But 14 can't have a four because then you would need to put that with a 10. So it, need to have, it needs to have five, six, eight, and nine. Now that's a very basic deduction, even for someone who hasn't done any killer Sudokus, just like the six being less than six would also be a very basic deduction. Uh, the six the six is quite easier than the 14, I think. But it's, it's symmetric in that uh, it works the exact same way. So we're teaching someone that this works sort of with the upper bound and the lower bound at the same time. These cages, we don't have to keep them here. We can move them around a little bit. We can take all these cages and we can move them into these cells. What we will do is maybe just build off of the basic pencil marks that we have here. So if we have these two cells in the cage, and that cage needed to sum to a very large total. Oh, you know what would be kind of cute? That's actually really cute. So if I set this total of the cage to be something quite high, above 30, if these cells had to be really high, like around 30. But they can't be 30, because if they were 30, then this cell would have no value. So we're, we're getting into interesting territory, but we're getting into maybe territory where it's, uh, it's a little bit too difficult. I think it's a little bit too difficult for what I want to do. This is, this is what setting is about, is having these ideas, thinking about them, refining them to be better for your audience. So let's, let's rein it in, and let's think about using simpler ideas here. Like, for example, we could do 
something like this where this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Over. This digit is going to be in here, which means these two digits are also one, two, three, four, but I don't actually wanna to, want to use that either because that's also a little bit too difficult. And then why don't we put some givens in these cells, which will give the approximate value of these. Three and four are in these cells. That's an easy way to think about it. Uh, so therefore these two have to be one and two, which means that these two have to be three and four, and these two will have to be the remaining one and two because there's a three, four pair in the row. I actually kind of like that, nine and eight. And then over here, we could put a 10 cage. And this cell can't be two, three, eight, or seven. So therefore, it can only be one, four, five, six, and nine. If it was a five, of course, then we'd have to do double the five, just like these six cages couldn't have threes in them, so we can't have a five. But this one see the one nine, so it must be a four six. This one also must be a four six. Now the other reason why I wanted to add a 10 cage there is because these two eights are here, which forces two and eight into these cells because they can't be here. Uh, this is obviously not a three. This won't be a three because there's a three up here, so that's a three. I'm thinking about also adding a symmetric cage here that does something completely different. So maybe just a 10 gauge. Let's just go simple. I don't know why I'm, why am I in a video that's uh, about keeping it simple, uh, trying to make it fancy. Let's just keep it simple, right? We could also do something silly. I like that idea. Why don't we do something a little bit silly and just use a bunch of 10 cages? Because that means that these have to be 4, 6, 1, 9 because they see a 2, 8 and they see a 3, 7. So I'm not sure if I like this 10 thing. It's, it's starting to make the puzzle a little bit too tricky, I think. I want this setting process to be very smooth, just like the puzzle. But you do need to take your time. Instead, I think I'll just move the 1-9 up. If we add a 10 cage here, that means this can't be 4-6 or 1-9, so it must be either 2-8 or 3-7, which you're going to say, whatever. But that means that it has two or three or seven or eight in it. So this can't be a two, three, and this can't be a seven, eight. It may seem like there's much we can do here. Now, what if we put that 10 cage on the other side? Let's see what happens. I mean, these three cells are two, three, seven, eight, and five, right? But these two cells can't be two or eight. So where do we put two and eight in this column? Well, we have to put two and eight in here. And if we put one of them in the 10 gauge, then we have to put both of them in the 10 gauge. So the 10 gauge is 2, 8, which might be too hard. The other thing I thought we could, could maybe do is do a 10 gauge right here, which will now have to be 4, 6 based on the other things. That's not broken. Three hours later. How to make an easy puzzle, but not. I should probably just open this in a new tab and go back and get rid of all of this. If I were to put those in there and then put these in here, uh, this being 3728 doesn't actually change the fact that this will be forced to be one four because this has to be, this has to have a two or three in it. So this can't be a two, three. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, if we just did that, this also has to be those options because it sees one, nine, four, six. And now this can't be seven, eight. So, although if this was a nine domino, it couldn't be three six because there's a six in here, so it need to be two seven. Now, is that broken? No, it's not, and it's actually kind of interesting. Okay, so the thing that sometimes is useful to do here is to use this button, true candidates in ranks solver, to look for where is the easiest place to make this puzzle unique. The coloring indicates how many solutions are left when you have that digit there. So if this is a five, there are two solutions left, which is why it's a very light five. 
Whereas if this is a one, there is also two solutions left, which is why they're the same color, but they look different. I don't know why. Uh, but if this is a one, there are more than two solutions left. But if this is a four, everything's resolved. So, and if this is not a four, I'm kind of interested to see that as well. Nine cage in there. And I will think about four plus five is nine and a one over here. So that does resolve quite nicely. Okay, I think that was good. And that ends this experience. Wow, he's kind of awkward, right? Oh god. Uh, <laughs> instead of that, I want to end the video by actually having a discussion. So I skipped over part of the test solve of the puzzle because I thought it was a little bit tedious, but it is so important to actually test solve the puzzle a few times before I even released it into the into the public, gave it to anyone. And uh, during my test solve, I realized that there was uh, some little bits at the end that I didn't really like. So I added this uh, this nine cage in box four here, this one here, so that the small the ending of the solve would be a little bit smoother. Now, I want to emphasize that the key to making an easy puzzle is just to not allow yourself to get carried away with crazy deductions. You want to sort of reel yourself in to focus on the simple ideas that people are going to get. There. Generally, if you don't know where a clue or what a clue is going to do before you put it in, then the solver is not going to know to look there for what it is going to do. If you know what it's going to do before you put it in, then you know that the solver might, might see that as well. Now, I did get my friends, my non-puzzling friends, to solve this puzzle, and I got the CTC community to test it, of course, before I even gave it to my friends. Uh, and the CTC community assured me that it is about one out of five stars. So that was what I was ex uh, expecting them to say. It was a pretty easy puzzle, so that's good. My friends had a little bit more trouble with it. Uh, I got three of them to do it. Two of them said it was really hard, and one of them broke it. But <laughs> one of my friends was actually trying to sort of guess his way through it. He said that he found a valid way to fill the cages that didn't work with Sudoku. Uh, and that's actually not an uncommon thing, apparently, because I also got my fiance to try this puzzle. And when she tried it out, she started out the same way as my friend, trying to guess what the answer would be and then seeing what that would do. Filling one of the cages, seeing how, if she could fill the rest in with Sudoku. And I told her that's probably not going to go anywhere. <laughs> and she insisted to do it for a while, but after a while, when she got nowhere, she started using logic. She got through it in about 40 minutes, and I, I gave her a little bit of a hint every now and then, but it wasn't anything massive, and uh, she thought it was very fun, and she thought it was not too hard. So that's good. I will show now one of my test solves of the puzzle, and going through it from the beginning to the end. So as you can see, all the logic that we had sort of seen before is in there. Some of it is a little bit easier once you fill in some of the digits. We didn't need to use that whole situation where these this could have a two or this could have a seven or eight so this needs to be a six nine you don't need to use that at all which is good because it's a little bit too hard anyways uh, we can fill in those digits and um yeah it, it's not too hard of a puzzle if you're experienced with sudoku but especially if you're not experienced with sudoku it can be quite challenging that's why my friends found it challenging that's why my fiance took 40 minutes is because her scanning was not at the same level as as mine or someone else's scanning from the CTC server. Uh, and that's basically why it's a little bit harder for other people because they don't actually, they can't see the deductions because they're not attuned to seeing these, these specific interactions as much as other people who have been working with this stuff much longer. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you go set an easy puzzle that you give to your family and friends and uh, they tell you that it's torture and then you laugh and say, no, my life is torture. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, like the video and subscribe. And if you want to support me on Patreon, I have one of those. It'll be linked in the description. All the tools I use to set this puzzle will also be linked in the description, rank solver and F puzzles. 
and the CTC uh, web app will also be listed there too. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.